What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over all the different YouTube targeting options that you have when you're creating a YouTube advertising campaign. So we're going to start here in our Google Ads account and just to continue with the same example I've been using, I am going to be promoting my beach Halloween decorations guide and let's just say I have this promotion 20% off all Halloween and fall decorations through October 15th. So that's what I'm going to be promoting today. So we want to come up with some really good targeting to make sure we're reaching people who are going to have an interest in this promotion. So let's come back over here to our Google Ads campaign screen and let's click on the plus sign and we're going to create a new campaign. But I'm going to eventually come back out to show you some different things to make sure that we can use all of the different targeting we have available to us. So we're going to come in here to create a new campaign and let's just say we want to drive sales. We are going to use the conversion goal of purchases. So we're going to remove this book appointments goal. So our campaign is going to be set up to drive purchases on our website. So we're going to click on continue. Next is going to be a campaign type. So for here, we're going to choose video and then it's going to give us just one option here to drive conversions. So let's click on continue. And what you're going to see here is we can name our campaign, we can set our bid strategy, we can set our budget and our dates. So I'm just going to set this for now just because I'm going to show you some different things throughout this video. So we'll just say we'll set a $10 daily budget. Now first things first is networks where your advertisements are going to run. So when you're running a conversions campaign, it's going to automatically opt you into all three of these different networks. You can adjust these networks where your advertisements run because if you want to just make sure you're staying on YouTube, there are some different campaign types that give you the option to exclude video partners on the display network. In this case, we're going to be using the YouTube search results, YouTube videos, and video partners on the display network for this campaign. Now location targeting. So if we really want to get a good target for something like beach Halloween decorations, what I can do is come in here to location targeting, go to advanced search and start targeting some of these different beach areas along the coast all over the country. So I can make sure that people who live all along the coast are going to be more likely to see my advertisement than let's say someone who lives in the mountains in Colorado. So you want to make sure with location targeting, you're also targeting people who are going to be the most interested in whatever you're promoting. And then the other thing with location targeting may be pretty obvious, but set the locations where your customers are located, the, the places where you actually either provide your services or actually ship out your physical products. So if we do come into advanced search here, and let's just continue with my Colorado example I showed you. So if you're targeting Denver, for example, Colorado, and you just enter Denver as a location here, you're going to see a lot of different options. So if you want to target the entire Denver market, you want to use the Nielsen DMA region because that's going to be the entire Denver market and you're going to see it's a large area. So when you scroll in here, it actually goes into Wyoming, it goes into Nebraska. So the entire Denver market is a huge area. Now, if we get rid of this and we again use Denver as our, our example, you're going to see just targeting the city is just going to target this area around Denver. So if you're looking for a larger market, use the Nielsen DMA region that's built in to Google ads. Now, the other thing you're going to see is they have Denver County, so you can target the county and also make sure you're not targeting Denver, North Carolina and Pennsylvania if you are, in fact, trying to target Denver, Colorado. The other thing you can do is target the airport. So that's another option you have. You can target congressional districts. You can see the county here. You can target the entire state and then you have the Nielsen DMA region and then you can target the entire country of the United States. So make sure when you're setting up your targeting, you pick the locations that are going to be the absolute best for your business. And you can get a lot of this data in your Google Analytics 4 account as well. I'm going to keep mine set as United States for now, and we're going to move on to languages. So you want to select the languages your customers speak. And keep in mind, if your entire campaign, your video, everything is in a certain language, you might want to set up separate campaigns for different languages. If you are targeting, for example, your English speaking customers with a certain video. And then if you're targeting your Spanish speaking customers with a certain video, separate out your campaigns using different languages. So in this case, my campaign is all going to be in English. My video is in English. So I'm just going to choose English for my targeting, but you can select from some of these other languages here for your language targeting. If it makes sense for what you're targeting and who you are promoting to. So in my case, I'm going to choose English as a language targeting, and we're just going to keep the location as United States but we're gonna keep scrolling down. Content exclusion. So this is really gonna be more geared towards targeting specific types of 
sensitive content. So if we come in here to inventory type, you can have access to essentially the entire inventory of YouTube and the Google Video Network by choosing expanded inventory, but you might have a video with excessive profanity, graphic sexual content. So keep that in mind if you do choose expanded inventory. Standard inventory, gonna get rid of some of those videos that have some sensitive content, and then limited inventory to make sure you're really excluding sensitive content as much as possible. The thing is, limited inventory will limit the amount of videos you can promote on, standard inventory will limit it compared to expanded, and then obviously expanded, you have the most videos available to you to promote your brand. So you can adjust this if you want, depending on what you're promoting. If you don't care if your ads are showing on sensitive content, choose expanded inventory. If you wanna make sure you're really focused on more PG, maybe PG-13 videos, stick to limited inventory. I like to just choose standard inventory, so kind of get the best of both worlds there. Next is gonna be excluded types and labels. So if we come here, you can select certain content types to exclude, such as embedded YouTube videos and live streaming videos. A lot of times I will exclude these types of content. And then over here under select digital content labels to exclude, I'll generally exclude content not yet labeled, and sometimes I'll exclude mature audience content. So it just depends on what you're promoting. I don't really have a huge issue with it for this campaign, so I'll keep it like this where I'm excluding these content types and I'm excluding content that hasn't been labeled yet. As you can see, our available impressions is still incredibly high, so we shouldn't have any issues uh, spending our entire budget. Okay, so site link extensions you can add to your advertisements. Since I'm just going over targeting today, I'm not gonna be doing that in this campaign. Devices, you can choose the devices that you're targeting, so that's another option as far as targeting goes. If you wanna just target maybe people on computers, maybe people on TV screens, you can choose that and set specific targeting for devices. And then there's advanced targeting available as well. So depending on what you're promoting, you might wanna show on just specific devices. So I'm not gonna change that for this campaign either. Frequency capping, so this is another good thing as far as targeting. You can cap view frequency to say, I don't want someone to watch my video more than three times in a given day. So make sure that you're not showing your advertisement to the same person over and over again. You could do the same thing with impression frequency as well. So how many times your video is actually an impression when someone is using YouTube or the Google Video Network. So I like to use frequency capping. Let's just set our three per day. Our video ad shouldn't be shown to someone more than three times in a given day. And we wanna make sure we're reaching unique people and not showing our ad to the same person over and over. So another targeting thing is frequency capping. We can set ad scheduling if you wanna make sure your ads are only running at a certain point during the day. So we're gonna keep scrolling down here. So we're gonna create our first ad group and this is where I'm gonna go over some of the different targeting options you have. So optimize targeting first and foremost at the bottom. Helps you get more conversions by using information such as your landing page and assets. You can speed up optimization by creating or adding an audience or opt out afterwards. Now I keep optimized targeting on because what it does is it's gonna take the audiences that we're targeting and it's gonna take our landing page, our advertisements, all the information that we give Google Ads and they're gonna use all that information to try to find people who are gonna be the most likely to convert. So optimized targeting helps you get more conversions by using information. So there's no downside that I've seen from using optimized targeting. It's only gonna expand your targeting and try to find people who are gonna be more likely to convert. Next is going to be people who we want to reach. So what we need to do here is click on the drop down here. What you can do is choose specific gender targeting. If you wanna say, I just wanna target people who are male, if you just wanna target people who are female, or you could just leave it wide open as far as gender targeting goes. Age, you can just target specific ages, you can target specific parental status, and you can target by household income. Now, household income is only available in select countries, and there's certain targeting you're not able to use depending on what you are actually promoting. So you might have an issue where your ads are disapproved, so if you do have any of those issues, Google Ads will tell you why it's been disapproved, and it's probably based on what you're promoting and who you're promoting it to. So in the case of beachfront decor, the gender that is the most valuable for my business is female and the age group that's most valuable is 25 and up. Parental status, I generally have more parents than non-parents, but it's not a huge deal and it doesn't make a big difference as far as conversion rate or any of that goes. So I generally, if I'm targeting with demographics, I will do female 25 and up because that's gonna be the most valuable group for my business. So depending on what your demographic targeting is, again, use the data that you have from Google Analytics 4 
any data that you have as far as sales, conversions, and who's gonna be the most likely to convert on your website, that's where you wanna set up your demographic targeting. Next is going to be audience segments. So audience segments is going to be the main part of this video, so we're gonna start at the bottom. Now, keep in mind, what you're saying here is choose who should see your ads. So the three different options they're showing here, custom segments, your data, and interests and detailed demographics. So I'm gonna start at the bottom with interests and detailed demographics, and then I'm gonna come up here to custom segments, and then I'm gonna go over your data. Now, one of the things you're gonna see is they recommend using your data, and they recommend using custom segments, which is what I would recommend to you as well. So you're not gonna get the best results by using interest and detail demographics because you're gonna have very broad audiences. So if we click here for interest and detail demographics and we go to browse, you're gonna see in-market segments, life events, detail demographics, and affinity segments. Now, affinity segments are very, very broad interest groups. For example, food and dining, if we click on the dropdown, coffee shop regulars, fast food cravers. So you have these very broad groups of people and what you can do is try to incorporate some of the affinity segments, but to me, they're just way too broad. So for example, with food and dining, I'm probably in several food and dining categories just from looking up recipes online. I'm probably in some banking and finance categories just from looking up some investing ideas. So you're gonna be put into a lot of these different affinity segments, and they're just way too broad, and it's not people who are actively looking up anything. You're just essentially targeting these really broad interest groups. I personally would not recommend using affinity segments whatsoever for your targeting, so that's not something I'm gonna go over too much. Just keep in mind these are really large audiences and you're probably in a bunch of different affinity segments and you might not have much of an interest in a lot of the affinity segments that Google has placed you in. Now next is gonna be detailed demographics. So this could be useful, for example, home ownership status. I could target renters. So if you have a specific message you wanna get out to renters or homeowners, or if you're saying for employment, I wanna target somebody who is at a small employer because I wanna target them with some type of message, some type of product that I have that's gonna benefit small employers. So you can try to use some of these different detailed demographics. Again, way too broad for me. I mean, I just don't see these being the best possible way to promote. And keep in mind, if you come in here to detailed demographic, you go to parental status, parents, and you're saying, I wanna target parents of toddlers one to three years. If we start adding other targeting as well, then it's gonna just keep expanding our targeting. So if I come in here to interest in detailed demographics, and I also say, I wanna target people with a home and garden affinity segment. So our impressions go from 3 billion available impressions to 8.3 billion available impressions. So if you're adding different types of targeting, it's just gonna keep expanding who you are actually targeting. So we're not gonna be using affinity segments or detailed demographics. You could try some of them if you want, but for me, I just don't find the best success with them, and I think they're way too broad. So we'll collapse detailed demographics. Next is gonna be life events. This is trying to reach people as something in their life is happening. So if we scroll down here, we go to college graduation and we could do recently graduated. So this could be an option as far as trying to target people with, if you're a recruiter or if you have some type of website where people can find a job, maybe you have some type of, you know, if you just recently graduated, here's the resource for you. So if that works for you and what you're trying to promote, then you can try to target some of these different life events. Again, still gonna be very broad, but you could reach people as they are in a specific life event. So the one option from this list that I do still use are in-market segments. Now, custom segments are starting to replace in-market segments just because you can reach better audiences. So if we come in here to in-market segments, let's say I'm targeting something related to baby and children's products. Click on the dropdown child car seats. If I have a brand new child car seat that I'm trying to promote, I can target this in-market segment and it's going to reach people interested in purchasing baby, toddler, or child car seats. So there are a lot of in-market segments that can be very useful depending on what you're advertising. And these are people who are actively in the market to purchase these products. Now, these audiences are very large, 490 million. So you might have people in there that haven't been looking up child car seats for several months. You might have people in there that have already purchased all of their child car seats and they're still in this in-market segment. So it's not an absolute perfect audience, 
but it is a great way to find people who are actively researching something. And if we do come in here and we click and we search, so I'm targeting Halloween beach decor. So if I search Halloween, I can find people in the market for Halloween supplies, for information about Halloween. And here we go. I could target somebody who's in the market for Halloween decorations currently. Now, there's way too many people in the market for Halloween decorations that have no interest in them having any beach or coastal theme. So that's where the issue with some of the in-market audiences come into play. What I could do is say target people who are looking for Halloween decorations, come back up here to our location targeting, and enter a bunch of those coastal locations and coastal markets. So I'm only reaching people who live near the beach who according to this in-market segment, are actively looking up Halloween decorations. So just some different targeting options you have at the bottom as far as interests and detailed demographics. Now next is going to be custom segments. So with custom segments, what we can do is click here and we can search. So let's search Halloween. So you're gonna see my custom segment that I've already created. So if you've created custom segments, you can search here and easily find them, and then you can continue to use them over time. So what I can do is create a new custom segment, name our custom segment, let's say Halloween Beach Decor. And then you're gonna see two different things. Include people with the following interests or behaviors. People with any of these interests or purchase intentions, which we can enter right here. So what we can do is say people who are purchase intentions are beach Halloween decorations. Okay, so if we just enter these three different interests or purchase intentions, what you're going to see is our gender, 62% male compared to female, age, 18 to 24, and 25 to 34 are two of the largest ages, 70% non-parents, and some of the different topics people are actually looking up. So as far as the weekly impressions, 1 billion to 10 billion to 1 trillion is a ton of weekly impressions. So why I prefer to use people who searched for any of these terms on Google, if we click on people who search for any of these terms, keep them exactly the same, you're gonna see our weekly impressions goes down to 100 million to 500 million, gender goes to female, age 35 to 44, 25 to 34. This matches my demographics much more closely than the previous example with people with these interests or purchase intentions. So what I would recommend doing is creating custom segments and do people who search for any of these terms on Google, add all of the relevant search terms here, depending on what it is that you're promoting. And what you can do is just enter a few different keywords here. You don't have to have 100 or 200 keywords. Enter a few different keywords, name your segment. You can expand your segment by including people who browse types of websites or types of apps. So if I go to types of websites, you can enter some different URLs here. So for example, I can enter my own website, I could enter some competitor websites, or what you could do is try to find some large websites in your industry, and you're trying to reach people who browse those websites and similar websites. So one option that you have to expand your segment, I generally just use a couple different keywords here, keep it as tight and targeted as possible, and we'll click on save. And now we have a custom segment that we're targeting, and it's gonna be much more narrow and better targeting. Again, it's showing this has 110 million weekly available impressions. Now this over here is showing 2.7 billion. So we do have optimized targeting on. So if you turn off optimized targeting, your impressions will actually go down. So just keep that in mind. Now we're down to 16 million. So just, just an option as far as optimized targeting. If you wanna keep your targeting very tight to who you are, who you have listed here, then turn it off. I would recommend turning it on because it's just going to expand the amount of people that can Google ads will reach and they're only going to be looking for people that they believe are going to be more likely to convert based on all the data they have. So these are custom segments. We went over interest and detailed demographics. Next is going to be your data. So with your data, what you're going to see if I come over to browse here are website visitors. You can see I have some different website visitor audiences and we have YouTube users. So what we can do here first is we're gonna to come to tools and settings and you wanna open up your linked accounts page. So if you're running YouTube advertising, then that probably means you have a YouTube channel. You probably have a website and you should have Google Analytics 4 installed on your website. 
So if we come into YouTube, go to manage and link, or you're going to see a details link. I'll show you in the next step. You can see I've linked my YouTube channel to my Google ads account. Click on the plus sign here, enter a YouTube channel, and you can easily link your channel to your Google ads account. Now you can see suggested channels. They have Surfside PPC down here, so I can link my Surfside PPC channel that easily. So it's very easy to link your channels, and this allows us to use video remarketing. So we can set up remarketing audiences for people who have actually watched our YouTube videos, subscribed to our channel, few different options that we have. Now coming back over here to linked accounts, if you don't have anything linked yet, you're gonna click on the details tab. Once it's linked, you can go to manage and link. So for this, I have my Google Analytics 4 account, and you can see right here that my status is linked, and same thing, it's very easy to link these accounts. So we're gonna come back over to linked accounts one more time, and now what we're going to do is going to tools and settings, and then what we're gonna do under shared library, we're gonna go into our audience manager. So this is where we can create our different audiences that are gonna be used under your data. So we're gonna come back over here, your data segments. So if you go to your data sources, what you're gonna see here for my data sources is I have the Google Ads tag on my website. Using Google Tag Manager, I implemented that. If you go to details here, there's very easy instructions. I have Google Analytics 4 on my website and I have my YouTube channel linked. So we're able to use all of these different data sources to create audiences. You can link other data sources as well. So if you have a mobile app, you probably wanna link that here as well and you can also target those segments too. So if we come over here to segments, we have our data segments. We can click on the plus sign, four different options, website visitors, app users, YouTube users, and customer lists. Now, in addition to those, we can also combine multiple audiences and create custom combinations from multiple lists that we've created. So what we can do first is if we click on the plus sign, website visitors, you can name your audience segment, do segment members, you could do visitors of a page who also visited another page, who did not visit another page, and visitors of a page with specific tags. You can enter different rules here. So I could say page URL contains Halloween. So I could say visitors of a page, Halloween. So anyone who has visited a page URL that contains Halloween, name my segment, choose to pre-fill the segment with people who match the rules within the past 30 days, and then I can also do membership duration, people stay in this audience for as many days as you want, up to 540. You can add a segment description, create that segment, and it's that simple, you can start targeting this for the, your campaigns. Now, I have already have some segment that are created here, and then there you might have some automatically created custom combination segment, for example, this AdWords optimized list. So we're gonna come back over to my campaign here, and now we're gonna come into our data. So one of the things you could do is take a custom segment and we're targeting this custom segment that we've created and then come over to our data, go to browse, website visitors, and let's just say all visitors over the last 30 days. I wanna target anybody who's been to my website over the last 30 days with my advertisements. Now two things to keep in mind. If we are using optimized targeting, what Google Ads is gonna do is they're gonna take the audience we've created so it's gonna be this custom segment along with our data and they're gonna to try to find people that are the most similar to these different audiences that we are actually targeting. So if you want audiences that are most closely similar to people who are visiting your website, then use your data, get rid of the other custom segment that we just created and what you're gonna see is you're targeting all visitors the last 30 days along with other similar people in that audience because if we were just targeting my all visitors, 540, there's clearly not enough impressions to go around if I'm just targeting that. So if you only want to target your remarketing audiences, turn off optimized targeting. So that is how to target some of these different audiences. Now what we could do and what I would recommend doing is we'll come into browse. We will use the one we just created, Halloween Beach Decor. And let's say we're going to use our data. We're going to go to browse. We'll do all visitors over the last 30 days. And then what we can also do is use our YouTube channel and say all YouTube viewers over the last 30 days. So anyone who's watching my YouTube videos on my channel for beachfront decor and anybody who's visiting my website, we wanna add them to our targeting as well. So these are some of the different options you have. Our weekly estimates aren't available, but if you're using optimized targeting, you're gonna have plenty of impressions available because they're gonna use all of this data to try to find people who are gonna be the most likely to convert. So these are some of the different targeting options that you have for all the, the different YouTube audiences. 
what we do is again an audience manager click on the plus sign youtube users you enter your youtube channel here and then you just select an action viewed any video viewed certain videos and you can enter the urls here you can do people who visit the channel page subscribe to the channel so there's a lot of different options as far as the different youtube audiences that you can create and then target in your campaigns so what i would do if i was launching a campaign like this is target this custom segment target my data and then turn on optimized targeting so google ads goes after the people that are going to be the most likely to convert so the next thing under here for advanced settings is you can narrow the reach of your campaign by adding keywords topics or placements so we're going to start with keywords here what we can do is enter different keywords and it's going to target relevant content based on the keywords we enter so i'm going to go away from my example here and let's just say i'm promoting a new baseball bat so what i can do is say my product or service is a baseball bat i'm trying to sell as many baseball bats as possible let's say i enter all these different keywords here baseball bat online metal baseball bat where to buy what google ads is going to do now one thing you're going to see video campaigns that drive conversions usually perform better without keywords removing keywords may lead to better performance so Google Ads themselves is saying, don't narrow your campaign, just focus on the audiences that we're already targeting and keep it wide open. That's what I would recommend doing as well. But if you wanna target the most relevant content possible, you can enter keywords here and what Google Ads and YouTube is gonna to try to do is reach channels and different videos where they talk about baseball equipment and baseball bats. Now it might limit your campaign a bit because if you're only showing your content on other related content it's going to limit your overall campaign so somebody might have a video on youtube of the 10 best metal bats for 2022 and that's where your advertisement might show which would be the perfect advertisement at the perfect time but somebody also might have the how they restore old wooden baseball bats so if i enter wood baseball bat here someone could say hey here's five old wood baseball bats People that are watching those videos have no interest in actually purchasing a new metal baseball bat. So keep that in mind as you are actually targeting some of these different content ideas that you can use, whether it's keywords, topics, or placements. People who are watching specific content might not be in the, in the market to purchase absolutely anything. So just keep that in mind that you don't really need to use this content targeting, but you can narrow your overall targeting and make sure that you're actually reaching people who are watching videos about specific topics that would be relevant for your business. So that's how keywords works. Next would be topics, pretty self-explanatory. You can choose specific topics to show ads on content about specific subjects. So again, let's say I'm, we'll keep up with my baseball bat example. I can come in here to sports, we'll click on the dropdown. Let's say we'll do some team sports. I can say baseball. So. People who are watching videos about the topic of baseball are going to be seeing my advertisement, or at least are going to be the most likely to see my advertisement. I could say sports fan gear and apparel, so then people who are watching video topics or browsing the Google Video Network and they're on websites relevant to these topics, my ads will be more likely to show on those different websites and different YouTube videos. Sporting goods, baseball equipment, this would be the best topic to target for this type of, if I'm trying to promote a new metal baseball bat. However, I, again, would not recommend doing it. So we're gonna clear all of these. We're just gonna leave this wide open again. So next is gonna be placements. So I used to use placement targeting all the time because let's say you're targeting for travel. You can come in here, browse, do travel, click on enter, and they're gonna come up with a bunch of YouTube channels. If we come back here, a bunch of websites. So you can target some of these different travel websites. You can see their total impressions per week come back again, target specific YouTube videos. So this is another option you have as far as targeting placements. It could be useful if you wanna to try to reach people with some type of solution as they are browsing different websites and apps and video lineups and YouTube videos and YouTube channels. It could be useful to target placements and sometimes you can reach people at the right time. So let's just come back over to placements. We'll use my baseball bat example one more time. Click on enter. And let's say YouTube videos. So see, this is the hitting the in the perfect game all American, three versus three home run derby. So again, it's it's pretty hard to find a perfect video 
So explosive bat, crushing MLB records. So I could target this specific video. It has 16.3 million views. RIP to my D Marini Green Zen, 111,000 views. I could try to target some of these videos, but as you can tell, just because someone's watching a video about a specific topic doesn't mean that they're in the market to purchase something that you're offering. So it might be something you wanna do if you really wanna reach people that you know are gonna have the most possible interest in whatever it is you're promoting. So if I'm promoting a new golf club, I can start trying to target some different YouTube channels and videos related to golf. It is good targeting overall, but what you're much better off doing is using optimized targeting, incorporating your data by making sure that you have some retargeting audiences from your website, some YouTube remarketing audiences, and then what you can do is just create a custom segment. Reach people who are actively looking up the different things that you're promoting, even if you only enter three keywords like I did. So th these are some of the best ways to actually target for your YouTube video advertising. And one thing I wanna show you is, let's just say you use your YouTube video URL here, you create your video ad, you launch your campaign. So I'm gonna fast forward to this part a little bit. So we're gonna create a quick YouTube video ad. Okay, so we create one advertisement just for this example, and we go to create campaign. I like to show this people because sometimes people wanna use different types of targeting, but they don't know how to do it. So you could either try to put all of your targeting into one ad group, or one of the things that I like to do is after you launch a campaign, take this ad group, we're going to select it, click edit and copy, and then we're gonna to go to edit and we're gonna paste. And this is gonna paste this exact ad group in our campaign so we can pause it after pasting just so we're not running the same ad group twice. Okay, so now why I like doing this is you're gonna see this new ad group, it's paused, but when you go into your new ad group, let's say you created six different video ads for your last ad group, you can see they're all gonna paste here. So I only created one video ad, it's obviously not not the greatest video advertisement in the world because I'm just doing it for this example, but if you copy and paste your ad groups, it will paste everything from that ad group, including all of your advertisements. So you don't have to go through the process of creating all your advertisements again. What we can do is just come in here to audience. So we're going to our targeting and we have our number two ad group here because we don't run, want to run the same exact targeting for multiple ad groups. We'll click on edit audience segments. So what we could do is remove these audience segments from this one. And what you could either do is come in here to browse. Maybe you want to choose an in-market segment to target in this ad group and try some different targeting out. Otherwise, what you can do is stay here, click on save. So now we're targeting no audiences in this ad group. Come over here to content and maybe select a ton of different placements for where we want our ads to appear. So some different options you have as far as targeting. And what you might find is if you're running these multiple ad groups here, you might find everything is going into this main ad group that we created first, or maybe the second ad group. You can always pause ad groups as you're running your campaign to see what's gonna perform the best for you. So what I would recommend doing is setting up the ad group like I did, using a custom segment, using remarketing audiences, using optimized targeting, and making sure you have conversion tracking set up and you have a campaign set up to drive conversions. So that's how I would run a video advertising campaign. That's how I generally run all my video advertising campaigns. Because then when you're in settings, your actual bid strategy will be either maximize conversions or target CPA, which are smart bidding strategies that will help improve and optimize your campaign over time. And then just go into your ad groups, test some different targeting. Don't be afraid to try some different adver advertisements out. And again, you can always adjust your location targeting as you go. DS continue. So we can always narrow our locations if we're seeing good results from a specific area, or in my case, if you're targeting people who live near the beach. So if you have any questions about targeting, I know this is a longer video because I kind of want to go over it in detail. Please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.